For this year's Trail Bike of the Year test, we got together 10 trail bikes, all with 120 to 140 millimetres of travel, and all priced between 3,000 and 3,500 pounds, give or take a little bit for shipping where necessary. They were all tested here in the UK, and then we took the top six out to our friends at Blacktown Trails near Madrid in Spain for the final whittling down to get our top bikes. And the Cannondale Habit Carbon 3 sneaked into our top five. This is my seventh year of being involved in Trail Bike of the Year, and every year the bikes just get better and better, as you'd kind of hope. If you're not familiar with the way we review bikes here, I'm gonna talk a bit about the bike, then we're gonna go into the frame, the kit, and then we're gonna talk about how the bike actually rides on the trail. Don't forget though, do like and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get notifications every time we upload a new video. The Habit is Cannondale's kind of cheeky little 130mm trail bike, but it's a bike with bigger intentions than it might suggest on paper. If you're at all familiar with the 50 to 1 crew, for example, they quite often jib around on Habits. So it is a bike that has capabilities, perhaps outside of its trail bike demeanor. This 3,300 pound carbon three version of the Habit gets a carbon front triangle and an aluminum rear triangle and it's built around a regular four bar suspension linkage. The carbon frame has a bit of down tube protection to stop rock strikes from damaging anything, and there's a pair of bottle bosses and of course, internal cable routing. The geometry is pretty middle of the road for a trail bike. So this size large gets a 460 millimeter reach paired with 435 millimeter chainstays. There's a 66 degree head angle and a 74.5 effective seat angle. We're gonna talk about seat angle later on in the review. On paper, the 3,300 pounds Habit Carbon 3 isn't the best value for bike out there, especially in this test. However, you do have to remember that this is a bike that you can get from a bricks and mortar real bike shop. This has some advantages. If you wanna go and try the bike before you buy it, it's very easy to go and demo one. It also means if you've got any issues, you can just pop back and hopefully they'll sort you out pretty quickly. Obviously though, there's more people involved in the supply chain, so the value is impacted upon, and it has got a carbon front triangle in there. At the back, there's a Performance Float DPS Evol shock from Fox, and at the front, there's a Performance Level 34 suspension fork with 140 millimeters of travel. The drivetrain comes from SRAM. There's an NX level cassette and shifter, and a GX Derelia, and this is mated with a Trivative Stylo crank. Trivative is just another bit of the SRAM family. SRAM also provide the brakes, and with these, it's a pair of Guide Rs. So the Guide is the precursor to the G2, which is the newest version of their trail brake. The R is one of the more basic versions of the Guide, with a little bit less power than some of the fancy ones, and less adjustment too. The wheels are pretty nice on the Habit. You get a relatively standard cartridge bearing hub, um, but then you get a pair of Stans Arch S1 rims, which are reasonably nice, tubeless very easily, with a pair of Maxxis tires. Up front, you've got a Minion DHF, comes in a 2.5 inch wide trail carcass, so nice and wide, plenty of support. It is dual compound, but I think having the width and the volume really helps mask the fact that it's a dual compound tire. At the back, you get a Maxxis High Roller tire, which is reasonably aggressive for a rear, but not quite so much as a Minion. Finishing kit largely comes from Cannondale. You get their up-down dropper. The dropper lever for that, I didn't particularly like. It was a little bit sharp, a little bit stubby, and the cable tension needed to be just right for it to feel nice. You also get a fabric scoop saddle, which has always been popular with testers, and kind of mushroom-like fabric grips, which personally, I didn't particularly like, but I know people who do. So that's all the numbers and the components that you kind of need to know about in a review, but the most important thing is how it rides out on the trail. And as we've found in the past with the Cannondale Habit, and as you might expect from a bike that's popular with those guys at the 50 to 1 crew, it's loads of fun. Climbing on the Habit is okay. It's not the best climber by far, it's not the zippiest, but it's certainly far from incompetent. It's not too bobby, but I did use a compression lever on the shock now and again, especially for longer drags. It does bob a little bit but it kind of gets up everything reasonably well without complaining too much. The 74.5 degree seat angle isn't exactly steep, 
but it's not too slack. That said, it's got reasonably long seat tubes, so I had the dropper post pretty slammed in there. Some of our taller testers in the past have had to pull the seat post out a little bit from the frame. Now, because there's a difference between actual seat angle and effective seat angle, the taller the seat post out of the frame, the slacker the effective seat angle. So if you're quite tall or have got long legs, you might find that the seat angle or the effective seat angle becomes a little slacker than you might want. This leads you to having a bit more weight over the rear axle on steep climbs, which makes it a bit more prone to the front wheel not quite going where you want it to go, and meaning that your hips aren't quite as over the pedals as you might want them for an ideal sort of power delivery situation. But assuming that you get on well with that shape, it does climb okay. There's plenty of grip, you're not going to get any KOMs necessarily, but we had very few complaints. On flatter, maybe slightly more mellow, or just trails in the woods that you go and have a muck about on, the Habit 3 is a whole heap of fun. Between the trees, when you're trying to accelerate out of a corner, there's enough stability in the suspension for you to be able to put a few quick pedal strokes in there to accelerate straight back up to speed. There's also just enough support, so if you see a little root or a little lip that wants jumping off, you can really push the bike into it and you get a fair bit of pop out of there. Because the bike isn't exactly a sled, on tight little corners, if you want to just sort of jib around to pull a little skid, whatever it is, it's a really agile feeling bike, really playful. So we really enjoyed riding it. One of the areas I really like testing bikes has a relatively gentle hillside with lots of little tracks just dug in by local kids and there's loads of little catch berms and little things to pop off and it's sort of one of those bikes which you can slide the back end into a corner and then sort of bounce out into the next corner and it just kind of encourages you to go and have that little bit of fun. With the 2.5 inch wide trail tyre up front, again despite it not being a triple compound, there's still enough grunt behind it that you can really push it into those looser, loamy corners and have confidence that the front end is going to grip, while the back end might kind of just do its little thing, but that's okay and it makes it really fun. While the chunky tyre does give you that sense of the bike being reasonably well grounded, and very composed and grippy in most situations, you can get the habit a little bit out of shape if you start pushing it as far as it maybe encourages you to try to now and again. One of the tracks I test on is a little downhill track at the Forest of Dean, it's called Corkscrew. And there's some off camber rooty bits, there's a fair number of drops and steps. And if you're really pushing it down there, compared to some of the other bikes in this test, you could start to feel the limitations of the Habit 3 down there. It only has 130mm of travel at the back. It doesn't have that super bottomless feel that some of the bikes have. And while it is progressive, it's maybe not the most composed when you start really slamming the back wheel into the ground. Also, the 34 fork at front does have that little bit of twang that comes from its narrower stanchions. In addition to those forks twanging a little bit, the guide R brakes don't have the bite of some of the more powerful models out there. And that 480mm seat tube does make its presence felt when you're going down something real steep, especially if there's a few drops, because it's kind of prone to giving you a little buck up the backside. If your riding mates do have enduro bikes or slightly more aggressive trail bikes, and you're trying to keep up with them, you might find that the bike is a little bit compromised in some situations. However, it is a bike that's incredibly rewarding to go and ride and perhaps pushes you to push it towards its limitations maybe before you'll reach yours. And it certainly isn't afraid to give it a go if you do take it to those chunkier tracks. So that's the Cannondale Habit Carbon 3. It's an agile, poppy, involving bike to ride, but it does have those limitations, which I quite like exploring anyway. And that's why it made it into our top five bikes in Trail Bike of the Year 2020. But let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notifications every time we upload a new video.